Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Joy Taylor. This podcast is the full show from today's episode of Undisputed from start to finish. We've got a busy slate, so skip, Shannon, let's get to it. Good morning, guys. Joy, how are you? Good morning, Joy, how are you today? Good. What's wrong? Huh? Are you up to something? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you over there being Drake, old Pusha T right here about to do something uh, bad, and you still... I, if you let me be Drake, no, I'm good. No, yeah. I'm good with that. You don't want to be Drake after what Pusha did to it. I don't care. I'm, I'm still Joy. Drake. I'm Drake. Pusha said bye Drake. to it. He don't want none. We'll see. We'll huh? see what happens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was bad. How are you, Pusham? I'm good. Yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah. know. <laughs> Let's get started with the NBA Finals. LeBron and the Cavs are huge underdogs as they get ready to face the Warriors for the fourth straight time in the Finals. According to Westgate, the Warriors enter as the biggest favorite to win the Finals in at least 16 years. Ty Lue said yesterday that Kevin Love is still in concussion protocol and he's not sure if he can play in game one tomorrow night. But Lou still sounded confident about his team's chances, saying, quote, you can't cast, count us out. It's not over till it's over. That is true. It's not over until it's over. Mm -hmm. Shannon, how big of an upset would this be? I mentioned it yesterday, Skip. I believe this would be the greatest sports upset in history. Because normally upsets, that when we think of upset, Skips, we go back to the Miracle on Ice in 1980. The uh, U.S. National Hockey mm -hmm. Team beat the Soviet juggernaut. But, Skip, that was one game. If you go back to Villanova upsetting Georgetown in 85, mm -hmm. that was one game. If you come more recent, I remember in 2000, Rulon Gardner and Greco-Roman beat Ag Alexander Kirillin. He was unbeaten, unscored on in mm -hmm. a decade, and he had won three straight gold mm -hmm. medals. So that's one match. Mm -hmm. They have to, the Spurs beat them one game. The uh, New Orleans, Pel the Pelicans beat them one game. Houston got three games off them. The question is, can you take this juggernaut down? Can LeBron James take this team down? Skip again. If you wanted to win $100 betting on the Warriors, you got to lay 1000 down. Kevin Durant averages 25. Steph averages 20. No, excuse me. KD averages 29. Steph averages 29, 25. Clay mm -hmm. averages 20. Draymond Green, people don't know this, Skip. He's 11, 11, and 8. Hmm. LeBron James is averaging 34. Kevin Love is averaging 14. Actually, he's averaging 13.9, Joy, but I want to round up and be, because I want to mm. be kind to him. Those are the only two guys that they have in double figures. If you go back, if you got to go all the way down to Kyle Korver, who's averaging under 10. Now, there's a chance, Joy read in the read-in, that Kevin Love might not even play. So you go all the way down. You go from LeBron James is 34 all the way down to Kyle Korver, who's averaging under 10. Mm. Skip, this would be the biggest... If LeBron James could do this hmm. with this cast that he has, this would there's no question in my mind, this would be the biggest upset in sports history. Hmm. There, like I said, you got to go to Olympics and you're talking about one. Skip, do you believe Buster Douglas could have beat Mike Tyson three more times? Do you believe that Soviet team would have mm -hmm. lost three more times to the U.S. national hockey team? Hmm. I do not, Skip, because yep. that's what you're asking. Could LeBron get one game? Sure. Hmm. But still, he needs three more to pull this upset. So with that being said, if he could beat this team as currently constructed mm -hmm. four times, it's the greatest sports upset in history. Hmm. So just for the record, I was there that night at the Miracle on Ice <laughs> game in Lake Placid. And I, I got to tell you, I don't know that much about hockey, but I, I silly me, I didn't see a LeBron James out on the ice for Team USA that night. Mm -hmm. I, I saw a bunch of kids who were all pretty good, and 13 of them went on to play in the NHL. Mm -hmm. and three or four of them made an all-star team. I think Jim Craig was probably yeah. the goalie was the most, most famous to end up playing with yeah. Calgary. Neil Broughton was a pretty yeah. good NHL mm -hmm. player, but I didn't see a LeBron. Mm -hmm. I didn't see a Gretzky out there, you know, for us, you know, mm -hmm. like, okay. And I was at all those big NCAA upset games, and, again, there are one-game scenarios. Mm -hmm. Some came before there was a shot clock, mm -hmm. so I, I get all that. But the closest to the LeBron situation would be Danny Manning, who fell all the way to a six seed in 1988 and then wound up as a six seed against my Oklahoma Sooners, who were number just – but they were a dominant number one seed, a prohibitive favorite that night. Stacey and, King, Mookie Blaylock. Yeah, you know, and uh, Horace Grant was on that team. And it just looked like it was over. But Danny Manning was pretty – he was kind of LeBron-esque that mm -hmm. night, and he just took the game Harvey. over. Yeah. Horace went to Clemson, didn't he? Uh, Harvey was on Oklahoma. I think Harvey – it was Harvey yeah. Grant. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. I said Horace Grant. 
So the point is that if you have that guy, you have a chance. So let's also go to what's happened in longer series in the NBA. Obviously, the first breakthrough was in 1994, the Denver Nuggets. They did feature Matumbo, who could block a bunch of shots. Mm -hmm. But they were an eight seed against a prohibitively favored number one seed Sonics with Gary Payton and Sean Kemp, coached mm -hmm. by George Carl. They knocked them off. Mm -hmm. That was the first breakthrough. And then we had the 07 Warriors, an eight seed, shocking the number one seed Dallas Mavericks of Dirk Nowitzki, who was the MVP that year. Mm -hmm. And the other team had some of our guys like Steven Jackson, Matt Barnes, Baron Davis. Eh, they were okay, mm -hmm. but they didn't have LeBron on that team, and they managed to pull it off. And then we had the 2011 Memphis Grizzlies. I don't know how they did this, but they were the eighth seed, and they knocked off my Spurs. And I, I don't need to tell you the imbalance in those two rosters, but it can happen, especially if you have a LeBron James. So this is what I can't get through my head. And I give, give you this. Vegas is saying prohibitive favorites. But what do you always tell me about Vegas? Every year they seem to build another bigger and better they casino do. because – people lose a whole lot of money mm -hmm. in Las Vegas, right? They do. they do. Because upsets happen in sports, and all of a sudden the house cashes in big mm -hmm. when the upset happens, and everybody's betting on the prohibitive favorite, right? So here we have Golden State. And what do I see in Golden State? I see a team that has lost its primary LeBron defender, Andre Iguodala. Nobody's making a big deal out of that, but, but I'm going to because – he plays LeBron really well. He plays him strength for strength, and he plays him savvy for savvy because okay. he's a veteran, experienced, wily, crafty defender who knows all of LeBron's moves, and he bothers LeBron. Can he stop LeBron? Nobody can stop LeBron, but he at least bothers LeBron. Okay. And now he has been replaced in the starting lineup by Kavon Looney, who is a – he's a G League product. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed that? He's, he's a G Leaguer. So wouldn't you think that's quite a dramatic – gap and fall there and I got to tell you the series I just watched with the Houston Rockets if Chris Paul did stay healthy if he didn't pull his hamstring at the end of game five right I'm pretty sure this would be the Rockets versus the Cavaliers right because that's how it sure let, looked let, but let me ask you a question healthy you want Chris Paul or you want Kevin Love well Kevin Love's – I think we just saw from Jeff Green. I kind of like him better with Jeff Green in the lineup they're more athletic they're more energetic they're, they have more pop to him or sizzle to him like and Jeff Green just plays his tail off if I'm not mistaken in the three in the two previous series in which they played because he didn't play the first one Kevin Love is averaging eight points okay in finals but I will remind you what happened in game four last year of the I'm talking about the NBA finals yeah. at Cleveland you remember yeah. that night yes Kevin Love hit six out of eight threes because Kevin Love's a big-time player on any given night. Yeah, but, Skip, you have to be careful with that because Kevin Love, if you're not careful, you look at Kevin Love's stats, they're so far ahead, they're meaningless, or they're so far behind. What did he do in crunch time? Where did he show up in game three? Remember he missed okay, that so, point blank so, layup, Joy? We was there, Joy. So, we saw it. So maybe you should be saying it's, it's a blessing in disguise, so to speak, that Kevin Love might not be able to play. I think he will be able to play. but I, I, don't, I don't think he'll be, and I wouldn't be terribly disappointed because here's the thing skip where he might have an advantage he's never able to exploit it against Draymond Draymond seems to have his way with Kevin Love why I don't know but that if you look at the series okay. in which they played All right. Draymond is winning okay so will Jeff Green do a little better against Draymond he might he just might and I'm going to remind you Jeff Green once upon a time was the fifth overall pick in the yeah. draft yeah. and by the way Tristan Thompson was once the fourth overall pick in the draft, and Kevin Love was the five, fifth Still. overall. Wait a second. And then we got J.R. Smith, George Hill, Larry Nance. Those are all former first-round picks. So let's not do chopped liver here on the quote-unquote hell. I'm going to start it. it. No, no I'm starting okay, it. Let me, okay, I'm let me. saying, wait a second. Hold on just a second. Let's not dismiss. Let's not sort of premeditate some excuses here, build in excuses. There's no excuse, for, Skip. Well, well, There's no excuse. Okay, wait, well, time out. Let me finish here. What did we just see from Golden State? Did you see a champion there? Did you see a dominating team? I saw a team that was often lifeless, completely out of sync, and highly beatable. I saw Kevin Durant just lose it, lost his confidence, lost his way. He became a disaster for t the end of game, which one was it? Four at home. You just killed him there. That was Kevin Durant. That was the best player on the planet. Well, what, take a shot. what did I say? I said, you got me on that one because that was 
hopeless at the end of that game because Steve Kerr decided, I'm not going to call timeout because I got the ball in the hands of the quote-unquote best player on the planet, and he should have shot it, he should have driven it, he should not have passed it. And from that point on, he became a disaster for the next two and a half games. I couldn't even recognize him. And at halftime of game seven, Steve Kerr went in the locker room and again, according to Steve Kerr, told his team, I can't recognize any of you. They were a hopeless mess at halftime. Didn't just about most of the NBA world think this is Rockets Cavs? Didn't it look inevitable? Didn't, if, if we hadn't seen two big scoring bursts from Steph Curry in the third quarter of Game 6 and the third quarter of Game 7, we'd be having a whole different story here. And that was the only thing I saw from a, from a Steph Curry who, by the way, I can just show you, we don't have time to get into the gory detail of this, Steph has never lived up during a postseason to his regular season MVPs. And often against Cleveland, he has he shrunk. He's disappeared. Well, he's not been Steph Curry. He, he almost averaged a triple mm. double last year. He yeah. didn't shrink last year. Wow. I don't know. Yeah. I just don't know. Skip, the man I'm not averaged sure. twenty six. Yeah. The man averaged but twenty six, you, nine and eight. Who was the MVP last year? Kevin Love. I mean, uh, Kevin Durant. Thank you. So all of a sudden, what did they need? That they lost to LeBron. Skip, skip, Wait a skip. second. They lost to LeBron. They blew a three to one lead, and you told me Draymond was crying in the parking lot and got on his cell phone and said. Kevin, can you please yeah. come and say that? And he us? came. Okay. He got so, the second best player now on the okay. team. And now we just saw two and a half full games of Kevin Durant where he lost his way. Skip, it's only a And, and they, they all talk about how vulnerable he can be as a human. Like he, he takes everything to heart. He reads too much on social media. He, he gets haunted by his critics. You know, I'm just not sure. Do you really trust these guys? I just think they're vulnerable. You, you know they're vulnerable. We've seen them be vulnerable all year. I, I know what you're trying to do. Uh, I'm not trying to do uh, anything. Okay, well, let me and by you. the way, Draymond Green against the Houston Rockets shot two for 17. For Give the, him his numbers. Wait, wait a second. Two for 17 from the three-point line. How many times in game seven were they just daring Draymond? How many times well, did you see him looking around like, well, well, that's I the, guess I have to shoot this because nobody's guarding me. Yeah. He, and then he, what would he happen? He shot two of 17. Clank. But over mm. these playoffs, he's averaging wow. 11, mm. 11 points, 11.6 11. rebounds, and Man. eight assists. Man, I don't know. Even shooting two of 17. But Skip, you mentioned something. You say the Mavericks got upset. Can you tell me the other MVP that was in his prime that played alongside Dirk? You said the Spurs mm. got upset by the Grizzlies. Can you tell me the other MVP in his prime that was playing alongside Tim Duncan? Would you want the rest of the Mavericks that year? No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. I, I want the other MVP. Yeah. So can okay. you tell me? I, I got what they're what they've done on their track record. I'm I'm asking, what did they look like to you? What does your eye test tell you against the Rockets? My eye test. Did they look vulnerable to you? Because it sure looked vulnerable to me. Test, there were nights I thought they couldn't make it, man. My eye test told me this team was down 13 points on the road mm-hmm. in the game seven mm-hmm. and came back and and won the game by almost double digits. What if Chris Paul had been there? But Skip, we can't do ifs. We can't well, do ifs. I'm we just can't. Saying. I'm just saying. And you keep talking about what LeBron did. LeBron at. Iguodala, you said Iguodala is the LeBron stopper. LeBron last year mm-hmm. in five games mm-hmm. averaged 34, 12, and mm-hmm. 10, and they lost in five. Mm-hmm. Minus Kyrie, who was 26, 5, and 6. Yep. They lost Kyrie. Mm. Kevin Love is their second option, and he's averaging 14 points a game, Skip, mm-hmm. not the 26 that Kyrie was giving them. So now they have four guys. Averaging double figures, three over 20. Yep. The Cavs have one. Okay. So their fourth best, think about it, Skip. Their fourth best player is better than Kevin Love, which is Draymond. Mm. So there's no question. I guarantee you, you have a draft right now. Nobody's taking Kevin Love over Durant, Steph Curry, or Klay Thompson. Mm. And they're not taking him over Draymond. So is, is LeBron, have you backed off this? Is LeBron better than Michael Jordan? Is he? No, I want to know. I just need to know for the record. Are we not? We're unmaking that case if, now? If Michael, no, Skip. See what you do? I know what you're trying to do. I'm not doing anything. I'm, I'm just asking a, you because I'm, I'm confused. No, I am seriously no. confused. Well, Is me, he that guy or not me, that guy? Let me enlighten you. Michael Jordan was the GOAT when he couldn't take down the big three Celtics oh. because they had the better team. Mm. Michael Jordan was the GOAT when he couldn't take down the bad boy Pistons mm. until they got old and started breaking it up. He was still the GOAT, but a great team will beat an individual player, especially Mm. now, Skip. No team has ever had two MVPs in their prime Mm -hmm. on the same team at the same time. Three of the top ten shooters in NBA history in their prime 
on the very same roster. Okay, I'm going to remind you, James Harden will be the MVP off this regular season. Okay. What do you see from him in the post? I see a guy who was made only for the regular season, okay. and there have been many times in the careers of Steph Curry and Kevin Durant, especially in Oklahoma City, without Russell Westbrook, when I said, I just don't know if he's that guy or not. But that's the, that's the luxury that they mm -hmm. have, Skip. You remember in game one, Steph didn't do anything. It was KD 37 and Clay's 29. And then they flip it in game three. Kevin Durant is, is a little, little sluggish. Clay is a little sluggish. And then Steph Curry goes off for 35. That's the luxury that they have. Mm -hmm. Two of those guys can struggle, but the other guy can go get you 50. Okay, so last year, Kevin Durant shocked me in the finals. I did not see that coming, that kind of basketball character and rise above and to transcend and take over. I'd never seen that from Kevin 30, Durant. He's had, he's okay, I'm just saying, I, game. I was lady. shocked by how well he played in the finals because he made a whole bunch of big game-turning shots. But despite all that, in game three in the King's house, the King had the ball in his hands with a minute 30 left and a four-point lead. And if you close that deal, all of a sudden it's two to one Golden State. And then what happened in game four? And again, maybe that wouldn't have happened in game four, but I just have to go off what I saw. Cleveland scored 137 points in game four last year. 137 at home on Golden State. So are they afraid of Golden State? Did, did they not have Golden State in a little precarious position yeah. there at the end of game three? They did. Okay, where, okay, okay. Can you tell me where the Kyrie is. Give me the second option that's going to give me 26. Where is he at, Skip? I have acknowledged all year long LeBron James is playing the best all-around offensive basketball I have yes. ever seen. We've offensive been, basketball. We've acknowledged that. Yeah, it's, it's sensational. It's spectacular. It's stunning on a nightly basis. And, again, if he doesn't get tired, he plays at a supreme level that nobody can deal with. And if you take Iguodala out where you can't even have one defender to maybe slow him down a little bit, bother him a little bit, all of a sudden, I say that is huge advantage, LeBron. But if you don't mind me asking, Skip, can you tell me the Warriors that's played all 48 minutes? Can you tell me the Warriors that's played 46 minutes in these okay, playoffs? I, I don't care about that. I care about what did you just see against the Rockets? Did you see a dominating team against the Rockets? Skip, the Rockets I didn't. Skip, the Rockets won 65 games. They had the best regular season record. They had the MVP. Okay. So what? So did you see dominating Golden State? I didn't see it. But you, okay. I saw a team that's not quite sure. Did of you itself. see dominating Kevin Love in this, mm -hmm. in this, in this, in the, in the playoffs? Have you seen? Uh, yes, I did. Win. I saw it for a five-minute stretch of Game Seven against Indiana. You, oh, you want to? You can't want to sweep. Game. So you want to sweep game, that under the down to five minutes. He saved your stop season. It, Skip, stop. Skip, no, don't that don't tell point. me stop. That's it. ridiculous. Said, it's not ridiculous. It is utterly ridiculous. Okay, tell me how it's ridiculous. Because tell me what happened in the five minutes that LeBron checked out and went up to the locker room. Because what Kev happened? Kevin tell me how it's ridiculous. I want to know. Kevin Love scored eight points. Wow, But really? up until that point, LeBron oh. James had 38. I don't care. You're only up one point. Then what happened? So now, if the you game's have 20 points, how many games? Well, what, what if they're down 12 when LeBron comes back? Your season is over. Skip. What Help about, me out. What about the game that you, Kevin you Love didn't get double it. figures? You can't explain Skip, it. Skip, the game is more than five minutes. What, what was you, the score when LeBron came back? Skip. They're up 12. What, what they're I'm up seeing 12. is Kevin they, Love won the game seven for them. So he just, won it. So Steve Kerr won the game for Michael Jordan. John Paxson won ridiculous. the game for us. This is a five-minute stretch against a team it, that had Skip. been nothing Stop but it, game. Skip. Nobody, you on that, you, you can have, you can play oh, yeah, that for, flag. Because your yourself. three Twitter followers no, told you that, that I don't I'm need wrong. no Twitter followers. Yeah, Skip, I, I, you I, I'm telling you, you are flat out wrong about this because I saw it and everybody in the NBA saw what happened. LeBron checked out with quote-unquote cramps. I don't know well, what he was unquote. doing. Now and you call the man alive. I don't know what he did. I didn't see him limp one second Just because you don't see something, it makes Whatever, he left the game for five crucial minutes they're up one point one minute left in the third quarter and through this stretch Kevin Love makes two huge threes eight points. and made a mid-range jump shot and I'm going wow this is incredible and all of a sudden Victor Oladipo and company just folded because Kevin Love took the game over you can't argue with that and LeBron comes back onto the floor and they're up 12 points yeah Bayless I'm sorry you if you don't hey if it's Jeff Green and he fails you're you're over there saying he doesn't have enough help. It was all Jeff Green's fault. You, you got to give Kevin Love some credit for that. Those are big time shots. Think about what you just did. A man making $25 million a year, and I, you praise him for scoring eight points in five minutes. Yeah, those after are. After he had done nothing were, were they in not, the previous six were, games. Were, wait a second. By the way, going into this last series, Kevin Love led the whole playoffs and rebounds. That's is that something? Okay, going wow, into it. Wow, that's interesting. Okay, what's he doing coming out of it? Interesting. Coming out wow. of it. Oh. Where was he in game? Where was he in mm. game six and seven, Skip? 
Where would you be without him? Where would you be? You'd be watching. If you don't mind me asking. Your guy would be watching. What? I, I, Seriously, I, I'm... I vehemently disagree because they played without him for 23 games. How did they look, Skip? Well, you got LeBron James. You got the Oh, great, now got we got LeBron. Player. No, you, We you, had you, LeBron you when me. he checked out for five minutes, too. Yeah, well, what, what happened in those 38. five minutes? He had 38 points before he checked out. Okay, and had, had Indiana gone away despite his 38? No. It's a one-point game. No. Did Indiana go away the whole series? That's what, they, they didn't until that five-minute stretch. Think about it. And wow, that's what made interesting. It so, that's what made it so spectacular. Because I, I already told you. 40 plus, 10, and I, 9, I, I and they wouldn't you, go away. You got actually a break that Kevin Love, God bless that him, got no concussed. He got concussed. And all of a sudden, Jeff Green, who LeBron seems to trust far more than he trusts Kevin Love, he loves Jeff. Jeff Green. Who hit the big shot that turned the tide against Jeff the Celtics? Jeff hit a big shot. Woo. Jeff hit a big shot because they had just taken a lead, and, okay. uh, a lead and Jeff Green hit a corner okay. three. So you got him in your starting lineup by fate. By fate. So Okay, let's just say this. Let's just say this. Okay, of the 10 players that's going to start the tip-off, how many of them, not lame LeBron, and the Cavaliers going to be in the starting five? So if you got those 10 starters and you picking five teams, five, five only five can start. Of the 10 that's going to start, tell me how many of them Cavaliers and how many of them are Warriors. That's why they call it an upset. But who's going to be the first pick in that draft? LeBron. Thank you. Okay, who's going to be two, how, three, how four, five? How many players get to play at one time in basketball? Five. What one game can be dominated and changed by one man Think more than it. any other game? One game. Basketball. One game. Basketball. You need four of those. Oh. You need four of those. Oh. Well, I saw this team with just a bunch of guys on it, the Dallas Mavericks, upset Golden State. No, uh, Golden State. Uh, Golden State upset the Dallas Mavericks with the MVP, Dirk Nowitzki, who was just dominating the okay, league. Okay. Nobody could stop okay, Dirk. Okay, so let me ask you a question. But you didn't tell me the other MVP mm. that they had that was riding shotgun with Dirk. Well, well, no team gets two. Oh, yeah, this is thank you. No more, for, no further questions. Okay, John. but but have those two played like MVPs this year? Have, have you watched? Uh, yeah, I just watched them against uh, Houston Rockets. What? They looked incredibly Let's vulnerable. See. Kevin Durant averaged twenty six. Steph Curry averaged twenty five. Klay Thompson averaged nineteen and a half. Did you see Kevin Durant the last the, the two and a half games before the second half of Game Seven? And Did you still, see it? As bad as he played in those games, he still averaged thirty. Oh, so you're making my case that he's still threatening to become the best player on the planet. No, no, again. no, no. You didn't say threaten. Oh. You said he was. Oh, I did until then. And then I said he was not because I actually say what I see as opposed to the guy sitting across but not, from me. But see, I, don't, I, don't I do... say what I see. No, I just say no, it. But... If you don't play, I say I'm out. Well, if you're going if you're gonna yep. do it, if you're going to do it game by game, the best player alternates from game to game. Because mm -hmm. when Anthony Davis gives you 59 and 20, he's the best player. But everybody universally regards mm -hmm. LeBron James as the best, mm -hmm. except you. We got to mm -hmm. leave it there. Did the Sixers mm -hmm. ruin their chance to sign LeBron thanks everybody. to a new Twitter yes. scandal? We'll discuss you. that next. No mercy. Hey, guys. Joy Taylor here. More Undisputed is on the way. But first, a quick word from our friends at Buffalo Wild Wings. At Buffalo Wild Wings, we'll admit that we often go overboard with our limited time offerings. We just can't help ourselves. Take our new signature sampler for $15. You get wings and three shareable options like fried pickles or cheese curds. Then there's our aptly named over-the-top nachos, a literal mountain of crispy tortilla chips loaded with your choice of pulled pork or honey barbecue grilled chicken, corn, jalapenos, and more. Then top it all off with our new platinum margarita. Go overboard with us today at Buffalo Wild Wings, Wings Beer Sports. Available for a limited time while supplies last. Please drink responsibly. Now, back to the show. No mercy. The Ringer reports that Sixers general manager Brian Colangelo had up to five Twitter accounts which were used to criticize members of his own team, including Joel Embiid, Markel Fultz, and the coaching staff. The report adds that at least one of the accounts disclosed non-public medical information. Colangelo admitted to using one of the accounts but denied having anything to do with using the others. Meanwhile, LeBron is expected to be a free agent in July, and according to Odd Shark, the Sixers have the best chance to sign him. Mm. Shannon, how should LeBron feel about this? Well, I'm sure he doesn't like it. So, but let's address this uh, issue with the, uh, the burner phones with Brian Coangelo. Uh, Skip, this is a horrible look. It's one thing for Kevin Durant to have a burner phone and get into it with Twitter. Account. 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 Yeah. That's one thing. Mm -hmm. You know, he wants to debate and he wants the anonymity. But for a general manager Ugh. of an organization yep. to have up to five burner phones and he's criticizing other general managers. He's criticizing players on his own team. Skip, this is going to cost him his job. Yep. Because the mere fact that he admitted one. Because what he tried to do, Skip, he tried to admit to the one that had the lesser of the harmful information out there. So he's like, yeah, that was me, but the others weren't. Why would you do that, Skip? And he's releasing information 
He releasing information about uh, Okafor and Markel folks. Only someone inside with, information. Yeah. With intimate. Yep. That actually mm -hmm. saw this happening. Markel folks shooting from his back, shooting in a chair, mm -hmm. releasing medical information he on did. Okafor. Mm -hmm. Only someone can have this kind of information, Skip. This is not. And he's asking reporters, why don't y'all ask him this question? Yep. Only someone with that kind of knowledge would know. Skip, this, I don't think it'll have an impact on LeBron James because, first of all, I don't believe Coangelo will be there if LeBron were to decide to go there. Yep. And he, first of all, he, another thing, Skip, he can't stay. After what he said about Joel Embiid, and I agree, Joel Embiid can be very childish at times, Skip. He can. Because he had surgery on his knee, he missed the entire season, and he's on stage dancing with Meek Mill. So that's, you don't do that. Those knees are worth hundreds of hundreds of millions do of dollars, yep. and you don't want to damage them. They're already they're slightly damaged as they are. But, Skip, given this, that I don't believe this uh, gentleman will be in the Sixers organization, mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to weigh on LeBron. Um, but it's not a good look. LeBron's like, hold on. Now, LeBron has had to deal with this before. The only difference between what <laughs> Coangelo did mm -hmm. and Dan Gilbert did, Dan Gilbert put it in the email. He did. He put it, he he, you know who it was. He put his oh, name did, on did. it. Yep. CEO of Cleveland Cavaliers. Yep. He let you let it be known. He, did. he wasn't behind, hiding behind mm -mm. An anonymity or burner phone accounts. Yep. Mm -mm. That's not what he did. But, Skip, I don't really think it's going to have a, 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 a bearing on LeBron. I don't think LeBron is so focused on the finals. He already, he's made it abundantly clear he'll address his situation when the time comes for him to address that situation. So I don't even think it's, it's on his radar currently. But, Skip, this is a horrible mm -hmm. look, not only for, for the, uh, 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 the organization, but Coangelo, I don't know how he gets another job. I don't know how he keeps this job. Oh, is he gone. He's gone. So just for the record, you're leaning toward LeBron staying in Cleveland if they make some moves that you need them to yeah, make. Yeah, but but I, I've been hearing some rumblings that he wanted them to keep Kyrie. Yep. He saw with the, and once that didn't happen, and then he wanted them to trade the pick. He's like, he wanted DeAndre Jordan. Yep. And he's like, I don't believe there's that pick. Even if I were to sign here, who could you get with that pick that's going to help us contend and win a championship next year? Okay, so I've said from the start, the obvious move to me, and I don't know LeBron's inner circle feelings about this, mm -hmm. but Philly is the obvious destination if he wants to stay in the East with the team on the rise, the team on the verge, with those two nuclear young weapons in the paint. And if you could keep some of those, that array of sharpshooters, it, it would work to JG me. The free agent. I know. Bellinelli, it's going to be so hard. So, yes. If you put LeBron under the cap, then I'm not sure who would have to go. Somebody, the, several somebody's would have yeah. to go. You will probably lose Covington. You're not going to be might. able to sign Bellinelli. But, but whatever. There is no way LeBron is going to go if Brian Colangelo is still the GM of this team because this is such a breach of trust Ooh. between management and players. Yes. This, this is stooping so low, it, it, it's, it, it's just, it, it's so yeah. devious, it's just so, it's so wrong, it's such a bad look, and yet, let's, let's look at Brian Colangelo, he is the son of Jerry Colangelo, who was a four-time executive of the year in the NBA, very He's highly regarded, run t Team USA basketball for Correct. years, mm -hmm. and I am sure, I'm not sure, I'm guessing that Brian has felt like he had to live in the shadow of his father all the way up. But Brian, it's all the way back in 05 and 07, he won executive of the year mm -hmm. twice now in 05 and 07. That's a long time ago. But he still lives in his sh father's shadow, even in Philly, where his father is still a special advisor to the 76ers. So you can argue that a lot of Brian's moves were suggested by Daddy. Daddy. You, okay. could yeah. you could see that happening. So is he a little haunted by that? To me, we have another Twitter victim here. He is so obsessed with the criticism that he reads from bloggers or or even just base, you know, Twitter fans. He didn't want to give Sam Hickey uh, skip. Yeah. Hickey drafted all these guys, except folks. He drafted uh, uh, Ben Simmons. He drafted Joel Embiid. So he wants to discredit the yeah. guy he replaced, and he's also via these burner accounts trying to discredit the guy who replaced yeah. him in Toronto. Yes. Really? You're stooping so low. Do you really care? Why should this guy, a two-time executive of the year, care what anybody else is saying? No. 
the, if, if you know the great executives, the Jerry Wests and the Red Auerbachs, they, they didn't care. No, they don't care what anybody says. You, gonna, you do what you think is right, and then you just... You just go. You're going to get some criticism. Yeah. You're not going to draft Magic Johnson and James Worthy no. every year. No. So you're going to you're going to get yeah, you're going to draft some great players, but you're going to get a couple of busts in there also. Yeah. But you can't be so consumed. Now, Brian, you would have been a fool if your dad's a special advisor. He's four-time executive of the year. He knows basketball. Yeah. You would be foolish to have access to him and not lean on him for information. Sure. I, sometimes you know what, Skip, and some you're right. Sometimes sons or daughters get so caught up in trying to remove themselves from their parents' shadow yep. is that they, they put these blinders on and the, the information, the access that you have is right there in front of you. Mm -hmm. But because someone might say, well, daddy helped him or mom helped him, mm -hmm. you're like, nah, I don't want that. I'm going to do it alone. Nah, nah. If someone can help me, I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask for help because if I don't know the directions, you know, I, I just got in Google Maps about a month ago, Joy, because I pulled to the gas station I said, hey, bro, can you tell me how to get to this? And he say, well, you go up here and you take, yeah, that's what I used to do, Joe. I, 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 ain't, too proud, I ain't too proud to ask. That, that'll work. Yeah. yeah. It's like, hey, Shannon Sharp, mm -hmm. oh, how you doing? Yeah, you were, old, you were Skip, yeah. yeah, yeah you yeah, were yeah. busted up Skip, like, yeah. yeah I said, okay, that's yeah, not what they say. Yeah, not what they say, they don't ever I say, well, let, You have an iPhone? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They already have a, a Maps app. Yeah, I, 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 I didn't know it till about mm -hmm. a month ago. Okay. But I ain't got Uber yet. I gotta, I gotta get that out. Oh, there. that's a big step. Yeah, I will get Uber on that next. So. The first indication that the bridge is at least on fire between players and the GM mm -hmm. is from Joel Embiid, who told ESPN that, that he got a call from Brian Colangelo, and he called me just to deny the story, says Joel. Got to believe him until proven otherwise. If true, though, that would be really bad, yeah. said Joel Embiid. Well, it, it, that's how the players would view it. It's really bad. And then Joel went right on Twitter to, to send a tweet ridiculing one of the burner accounts. Yes. Well, that's a bad look for so Brian now, Colangelo if he's making fun of his, his burner account. You, you oh, got, he got interesting. Go. Skip, you know the, the, the saying of crossing the Rubicon. You were yeah. big, you know, back in the uh, mm -hmm. season, they say you couldn't take an arm, you couldn't cross the Rubicon. That's what they said. So yep. the crossing the Rubicon mm -hmm. meaning you're entering the point of no return. Mm -hmm. Skip, there ain't no, ain't no coming mm -hmm. back from this. Mm -hmm. He can't save his job. Because There's no way. To, to your point, he's using privileged insider yes! information to defend himself on some burner Twitter right. account to media members. Right. What? But Skip, we know how this, this is how inside information goes. Mm -hmm. That's how insiders get their information. The thing is, is that they, the, the person that's given that information, my sources say, mm -hmm. it can never be traced back. I was like, Skip, he got accounts. Now, these accounts are going to come back to somebody. Mm. And just like somebody got tipped off, and not two people tell the truth, somebody's mad at him. Because there's no way, because this has been Somebody going, inside was mad at him. He fired somebody, somebody or he did something. Somebody tipped the ringer off, and then the ringer did a great job of tracking this and nailing it completely down on all five accounts. And that's the thing. If somebody tells you there's mm. gold over there, yep. you just got to dig for it. You're going to dig as deep as you can until you find it. Once someone gave him that information, the ring said, well, I'm just going to keep keep on digging. See what, oh, one? Hmm. Another one? Oh. Three? Mm. Hold on, let me see if I keep doing. <laughs> this dude got four burner accounts, Skip. Mm. Burner phones. Mm. Like I said, KD doing that, Skip, you want to go back and forth with, but KD is not an exec. KD isn't bashing. I, I think it's a bad look for Kevin it, also, but but he's not an executive. You know what, You're Skip? Right. For me, stand up. Tweet from your phone. Okay. If you got something to say, you got a problem with some, someone doing or someone said, tweet at them. Don't hide now. Don't throw the rock. Hey, that wasn't me. You break the window talking about who did. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. <laughs> no, don't, don't throw a rock and hide your hand. Own it. Man up to it. Fess up to it. Well, bottom line to this, I still think Philly has a good shot yeah. of landing LeBron James next year. And if that's true, he's got to go because this could be the one stumbling block in the way of LeBron going to but Philly. See, I, ain't as, I ain't as gung ho on him going to Philly as everybody else well, because I, I believe Ben Simmons is a couple of years away. Skip, the guy won't shoot a shot outside the field. He will not. That's not coming overnight. He is not. T forget turning this. He's never going to be stale for Clay. Forget that. Just being a 40% a, a guy mm -hmm. outside of 10 feet. Okay, so you now dismiss the Rockets as a possibility. And I know you from the start you dismissed the Lakers as a possibility. Yeah. So where do you, where else are you gonna go? Boston? I, no. 
No, no we ain't going to Boston. Yeah. We don't. We don't beat them. We 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 don't, we don't. Yeah, but you didn't beat them with their guy. We beat them. Huh? We beat them. Like yeah. you tell us, you got to beat with who you can play. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. The Warriors ain't giving that championship trophy back because well, they beat the, uh, uh, the Cavs without Kevin Love and Kyrie. Well, what are you gonna do? Quit? Because now you say it's he's down on Cleveland. So where, where do you go? Well, you know, I mean, Dan Gilbert can make it yeah. right. Oh, we can make a run. Yeah, yeah. tell us we're mm-hmm. gonna be able. We're gonna get first right to buy the Cavs. Oh. That'll go a long way with us. I, I mean, I do believe that executives <laughs> have accounts that monitor the players and yeah, you, you just want to monitor, monitor, monitor what they're saying. Like, yes, tweet anything. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, I mean, this is just this is letting your ego get away from you right here. The dude said he wish he had a step ladder so he can climb up and knock some sense into Joel Embiid's head. <laughs> that what he <laughs> that what he said. Yeah. You're taking a shot at your star player. Well, now you got keyboard courage because you think nobody knows who you are. Yeah. But you, you know where all the bodies are buried, right? Uh, mm. Woj just tweeted, 76ers president Brian Colangelo, Brian Colangelo has been actively reaching out to individuals mentioned in those burner accounts, insisting he isn't responsible for those tweets. Huh. So, 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 so. Yet, after the ringer asked about two of them directly to the Sixers, all of a sudden, the other three they, the ringer didn't ask about went from public to private. Boom, 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 right in a row. I'd say he had So now to do. we got people out there, Joy, hacking burner phones. They, they hack that phone and tweet information that only someone that works for the Sixers inside Skip would know. So we got people hacking those phones. Yeah. And they don't even know you who the phone... You just got to take the, the Skip Bayless policy with Twitter and just don't look at it. No, I got to look. I got to be talking to me. See. Oh, you see on Twitter, Skip? We got something for you. I got something. We're going to come out the break. You, we got you need that you. reinforcement. No, no. They don't <laughs> you need, need no... Those... The Patriots yeah. still be considered the oh, team to beat in the yeah. NFL. Yeah. We'll debate that next. No mercy. Stories continue to roll in about the tension in the Patriots organization, but they're still the team to beat next season, according to ESPN's Football Power Index rankings. The defending champion Eagles and the Steelers are next on the list, with the Cowboys coming in at 12. Hmm. Shannon, do you have a problem with the Patriots at number one? I got a big problem. Mm. Got a big problem at 12, but I want to address that in this show. That's going to be for another show. No, we we might get there in just a minute. Skip, I got a a, a real problem with this, and I get the Patriots offense. Gronk is healthy, no offseason surgery. You bring Julian Edelman back, so it's almost like you're getting a guy. I believe Sonny Michelle is a bigger, faster, more explosive Deion Lewis. Really? Now, that's a mouthful you just said, because Deion's pretty good. Yeah, Sonny Michelle is... He, I, he, I, I in, agree with in you. In this offense, he can no, be special. I know, but, but you got to depend on him to be special like that. Yes, and, I, and okay. I, believe, I believe he will be. Skip, did we not just see that defense give up 41 points, we over did. 500 total yards to the backup quarterback, no matter what you think of Nick Foles. At the, he was the backup quarterback at the start of the season. We saw that. I think we I saw So that. what did they get in the draft? Who did mm-hmm. they sign via free agency to shore that up? Okay, yes, they had the fifth scoring defense, mm-hmm. but they were 29th in total D, 30th in pass D, and their best corner just left and went to Tennessee. I'm trying to figure this out. Now, you look at the Rams. And look what they did defensively. Oh. They made a strength even stronger. So they put in Dominican Sue mm-hmm. beside arguably the best defensive player in football in Aaron Donald. They did. You, you, you trade for uh, Akeem Tlaib. You trade for Marcus Peters. Mm-hmm. And then you sign Brandon Cooks to go with the number one scoring offense. Mm. How? Mm. What? Are you telling? Granted, okay, the Patriots did finish number two, Skip, in scoring mm. offense. Yeah. So what? They scored three more points with uh, uh, Edelman. Mm-hmm. If de- what did they do defensively? That's what gets, that's what I'm in Philly. Look at Philly. Philly's defense didn't take a step back. Mm-mm. Philly's offense is not going to take a step back. And look, I get it. If you say you know they're favored to go to the uh, uh, the Super Bowl, I get that, Skip. Because if you look at it, the top ten, two AFC teams, two Pittsburgh and New England. So are you are they trying to say the AFC is is the the, the week of the conference? They are saying that. Oh, yep. oh, hold on, hold on. Mm-hmm. I know Tom Brady. This ain't this must be Tom Brady first year, because then I'm gonna have to call in the question all them eight Super Bowl appearances, Joy, if he playing in the week of the two conferences. Mm-hmm. But that ain't none of my business right mm-hmm. now, Skip. Mm-hmm. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Bottom line, this system says that the team with the best chance to go win this Super Bowl next Super Bowl is New England. And yet, this system ranks New England's defense 17. <laughs> mm, okay. I don't want them people doing my and taxes. By the way, off this offense was lost Deion Lewis, yes. Danny Amendola, yep. Brandon Cooks, yep. and the left tackle Nate, Nate Solder. Solder. Okay. That, that's quite a bit of loss right, right, right there. Right. I don't know. Silly me. I don't know. 
I can make a case that on paper, the Patriots shouldn't be quite as good as they were a year ago. Right. Again, Edelman's coming back. Right. But Gronk was there last year right. also. And, and how yet, soon did that rookie tackle now? Because you go ask a rookie to step in and start for Nate Solder, who's been their bookend since 2011. So to me, this whole argument and case boils down to a 41-year-old quarterback. Yes. He'll play at 41 next Correct. year. Wow. So that's the quarterback that you said before last season has two good seasons left in him. Correct. Which would be last season in which he won the MVP and next good. season, where if, if they're going to be this team that this system projects, right. I'm pretty sure he's going to have to at least be in the MVP race yeah. if not win it. He might have to be a little better. He might have to be. Because, Kip, if you look at their defense, because I don't, I don't see what they de did defensively to get better. How yeah. do you get better? Adrian Claiborne. Yeah, the dude had six sacks in Against one game, Cowboys. and he ended up having eight and a half. Against Chaz Green. Yeah. Y'all yep. gave him a lot of money. He won, mm -hmm. got $1.5 mm -hmm. million for that game. Danny Shelton, Cleveland deemed him replaceable. The dude with the, 15, 15, what, the 12th pick in the draft yep. in 2015. Yep. And they've already – Skip, think about this. He got 1.5 sacks in three years. Mm -hmm. Dante H Hightower should come back next year, but I don't know how healthy he's going to be or stay. Right. I don't know. And yet, to your point, they do have – the, what's deemed by this system the second easiest schedule. So that gives them some break. But you still got to go play those teams, right. and you got to win those games. So let me get this right, Skip Bayless. I'm going to make sure I get you on record here. They have the second easiest schedule, and they're playing in the East, and they're playing in the, the least of the two conferences. Mm -hmm. So how much credit are you giving to Tom Brady now for all them appearances, them championship games and Super Bowl? Tom Brady is 41 years of age next year. And at 40, he not only won the MVP, but he should have won the Super Bowl mm -hmm. with a record 505 yards passing. Mm -hmm. No one's ever done that in any playoff game ever. No, and nobody's he ever threw, threw that many yards and he, took the he L. He threw the greatest Hail Mary I've ever seen from about 65 yards. It wasn't no 65. He hit Gronkowski right in the it hands, and I don't know what happened. No. I still don't get it. I mean, I, I How do you not catch you know, that? You know, that restaurant, I stayed over late. Because really? I knew he had an old big game like that, 500, so I had the champagne flowing really? for him for that L. Yeah. Yeah, I don't normally serve champagne for L's, but that was, I mean, that performance that he put on Skip, I had to give him something. So, 600 yards of offense, yeah. 505 passing yards, yeah. bubbly on the house. Hmm. <laughs> so after game five of this upcoming NBA Finals, yep. when LeBron knocks on your restaurant door, what are you going to tell whoa, him? Whoa, whoa, huh? whoa, Skip Bayless, we're going to talk about LeBron mm. tomorrow. Mm. Right now, we talk about Tom you gonna Brady. You going to let him in? We talk about Tom Brady. He was, I mean, Joe, he was just drowning, just uh, drinking his sorrow. You're going to tell LeBron James, I don't serve losers. <clears throat> you're going to tell him that? Tom Brady, like, ah, what happened? <laughs> oh, Nick Foles, what yeah. happened? Nick Foles. Yeah! Man. And by the way, speaking of bets, you bet me that the Cowboys would be seven and nine yeah. or worse. And yeah. this system says 8.5 wins projected for Dallas. And by the way, that's tied with Jacksonville's projection, and that's ahead of the Texans. I'm trying to figure out Listen Pittsburgh. Listen to this. Go ahead. Ahead of the Texans, the Ravens, the Titans, the Seahawks, the Raiders, the Lions, and the Denver Broncos. They're considerably below the projection of 8.5 for Dallas. I How do you explain that? It. I don't believe it. Huh. I don't believe it. You better not believe it. I don't gonna... believe it because yeah. I'm going to get my Sprite back one case at a time. One case at a time. Yeah. Well, I think you're looking dismal for this because we still have Dak Prescott and Ezekiel Elliott and what should be the best offensive line in football. And that's what they're oh, you... saying because they're saying this is the seventh best offense by their projection with the what, what, 25th worst defense. Oh, yeah. yeah. And somehow you, forget, you end up getting 12 out of okay, that. So it's okay. Patriots-like. You, you've got Dak Prescott as the Tom Brady of Dallas. That's what you got. And, and by the way, Q, you can't even QBR, you I'm just saying, QBR said third a year ago in his rookie year, fourth last I don't year. Do, I don't go past yeah. one because oh, really? my guy was in the top slot. Yeah, yeah old oh, Walkie Tour. You seen anybody there spinning that ball the other day, Skip? How many playoff games has he won now? He How many has he played? He got that ring. Oh. He got that ring. Yeah. Ring. Yeah, he got that ring. <laughs> What exactly did he do to get he that? He did ring? a lot. He won 13 games. Skip. Really? You need to put some spec on that man's name, yeah. too, Skip Bayless. Mm. Now, I'm sorry. That's what you got to deal with. I mean, so, that's y'all pusher T. Y'all Drake, he pusher. Y'all yeah. got to deal with him and them dropping them beats on y'all for the next 10. Really? Yes. So, oh, so how, did, how do you like line? your Broncos ranked well below the Dallas Cowboys in projected wins? They're going like to they have more wins than y'all. Do we want to double down on that? I bet you a case of Sprite to do. Okay, yeah. good. We got another one. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, we got Thank you. Yeah. That's another one. Yeah. I don't know what I'm going to do. I got a swimming pool of Diet Mountain Dew coming. You got no receiver to catch yeah. the ball from Dak Prescott. Spread the ball.
Ready to who? It's going to be a democracy of receivers. Hold up. Cole's, uh, oh, you got a rapper? Y'all got a rapper playing slot receiver now. We do. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. true. He'll just be a little cog in the system. Oh, a little yeah. cog, huh? Yeah. Like he was last year. With beating this cog. Warriors team, cement LeBron as the GOAT. Rob Parker joins the debate next. No mercy. LeBron and the Cavs enter the NBA Finals against the Warriors as the biggest underdog in at least 16 years, according to Westgate. LeBron has been an underdog in seven of his nine finals appearances. The Cavs are also a massive double-digit underdog for Game 1 tomorrow night. We're joined by Rob Parker. Welcome, Rob. Good What's morning. What's happening? Good morning. How will the finals affect LeBron's legacy? This is huge for LeBron. I'm looking at you. Skip already knows, but this is huge. Because... I'll hear you out. You hear me out on this, Shannon. <laughs> okay. When LeBron James loses the NBA Finals, he will officially be removed from the GOAT conversation. And here's the reason why. Steph Curry will then have three championships in the LeBron era and will have beaten LeBron all three times. It's hard for you to make an argument that he's the greatest of all time, yet a player, a contemporary in his era, not on his team, has the same number of championships as he has and has beaten LeBron during that time. So I think that this is huge for LeBron that once he loses this, he drops out of that conversation unless something changes and he wins two more when he goes to Philly or does something else. But as of the end of this NBA Finals, he will no longer be validated to be uh, discussed with Michael Jordan because he, he didn't own this era. Everybody ate in the LeBron era. The Spurs won. The Mavericks won. Uh, the, the Warriors won. Boston won. I could just go on and on. Everybody won. Can I, can I ask you a question? Michael Jordan got in the league in 84. He retired in, say, 04. So the Bulls won championships, all those championships from 84. No, they didn't win all of them. So, they, so, so people ate in the, in the Michael Jordan era. Name me. No, name me. Larry Bird ate three times. Name twice. me. Twice. No. What? He didn't, match, he didn't match Michael Jordan. I'm telling you, Steph Curry is about to match him. And Shannon, he beat... He won his three championships in four trips, not nine trips. Let me ask you a question. In four trips. What happens if Steph Curry, if Kevin Durant is the finals MVP? Steph Curry would have three championships and not one time. That's fine. Five. He also won two MVPs back to back during the LeBron era. LeBron. I'm telling you, it's not that he would be the GOAT. I'm not saying Steph is the <laughs> GOAT. I'm telling you, it removes LeBron James from but, the GOAT. But you're not trying to elevate Steph into the conversation. Yeah, yeah, actually. No, is. Yes, actually no, I'm is. not. No, I'm not. You can't. I'm not. You just Skip, can't. I'm just saying LeBron drops out of it. You should have just because, said. Look, no, he drops out of it because Steph has a many chances. And you should have left it at that. That's but what I'm you, saying. Once you put Steph when Andre Iguodala, when he was an MVP and Andre Iguodala win finals MVP, it is over. It's Steph over. has three, will have three championships and four tries. Mm -hmm. LeBron has three and nine tries. There'll, there'll, there'll be a lot more. To, I believe, for me, Skip, I believe because he's such an overwhelming underdog, mm -hmm. it will go on his record. He loses, he's 3-6, and six, but I believe they will view it like 07. It's on his resume, Skip, but nobody even talks about 07 because they know he wasn't going to beat Tim Duncan, Les Spurs with Manu and Tony Parker. They knew that. He, 1000 If you want to win 100 bucks betting the Warriors, Rob, pull 1000 bucks out your pocket. I get it. But that doesn't change the numbers. You no. can't have it both ways. If LeBron wins, you're going to sit here and tell me he's the greatest player of all time because he won? No, I said that before he was going in, so it just doesn't have no bearing on me. Okay, so this doesn't change anything. Don't they, change nothing they, for me. Okay, no. he's still a GOAT regardless. Yeah. So he can lose the next four championships. He's still a GOAT. Is get, that what you're saying? If that man get that the 12, makes no sense. If the man get the 12 straight finals, yes. where, where did they done that at? But, but not it's even about the Yankees, winning. Not even the Yankees or the it's 20s It's about winning, But anyway, man, you know that. Skip Bayless. Mm -hmm. If LeBron James were to pull this off, I believe I mean, you and I. Is he going to pull it off? Can you let me talk to Skip? Okay. Skip, if he were to pull this <laughs> off with this collection of talent that he has surrounding mm -hmm. him, you and I debated this earlier. I believe this will be the greatest sports uh, upset in the history of sports. New York now, Giants upset the 18. That's one 18. game. Do you believe they could have beat them for three more times? Uh, thank you. But as I was saying, Rob, uh, uh, Skip Bayless, mm -hmm. LeBron James. There's always pressure on him. So I, there's no pressure. There's always pressure. You're LeBron James. You're the most high, high school basketball player mm -hmm. in the history of the game. And you've lived up, maybe even exceeded the expectations. Mm -hmm. But Skip, nobody thinks he's going to win this. 
nobody really does because you got two MVPs in their prime on one team. You got three 20 get 20 point scores in their prime on one team. They got one guy. Do you realize Draymond is the fourth best player on their roster? He's averaging 11, 11 and eight, and Kevin Love is giving you 14 and 10. Mm. Rob Parker, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. I'm not uh, for what? I'm just telling it like it is. By the way, Draymond shot two for 17 from three against the Rockets. Two Very for nice. 17. Hell, James Harden shot wow. two of 17. He shot two for 100. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, LaShannon Sharp, yes. I will definitely give you your first point. If LeBron pulls off this upset, and clearly it would be an upset, it would carry the most weight of any of his achievements in relation to has he caught Michael or not Mm -hmm. because he would pull this one off without Kyrie against a team with Kevin Durant. Mm -hmm. So that's weight. I, I give you that. So it would definitely dramatically close the gap with Michael Jordan. Widen the gap. It would close. The no, gap. he's already you know in the front. He days. already in front. He about to speed off. He's about to speed off. The odds are, in all probability, <laughs> he is going to lose this in five games. I got and then, four games. Okay, four games. Yeah. It could be. I said yesterday, it's very possible this will be a sweep. But I would think more likely five. I'll give LeBron. He's LeBron James. He's the best player on the planet. He should win at least one game here. Are you admitting that? But, but Skip. No, I, I, I told you until Kevin Durant proves otherwise. Now Kevin's got another opportunity head-to-head with the man you call the best player on the planet. To show us otherwise. Skip, this is why I think it, yeah. it could be a sweep. With Kyrie, they, they get lost in a five-game sweep, but he averaged 28 points against mm-hmm. the Warriors. This team reminds me of as bad as that 2007 team. I know the NBA doesn't like sweeps. They don't make money, and people will try to manipulate to get another game or two out of it. But I'm to- telling you, the referees can't help this team. The Cavaliers are terrible and will not win a game. They're terrible. They're terrible. They, hold on, think about, think about what you just no, said. No, they no, are. No, no, I want you to think about what you just said, and I'm going to say what you just said. The Cavaliers are terrible, and they're in the NBA Finals. Can you tell the people at home this? Why, they this, are. Why? Because the East Thank is you. terrible. It's because the East is terrible. It's not, it's not a reflection of just LeBron James. There's nobody in his way. There hasn't been for a decade, How about Skip? this here? He was with the Heat. Who was going to the Finals when he was with the Heat? When he came to the Cavaliers, the heat, start, the heat stopped going to the finals, and the Cavaliers started going. So what's the one common denominator? They say oh, too many coincidences are not a No one's saying he's not a great player. That's what you're saying. No, I'm not. No, 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 no. We're not saying great. See, there's a difference. He's not the great. We're talking we talk about tra- skill. What's that word you like to use? Transcendental? Yeah, transcendental. <laughs> Transcendent, actually. Yeah, but here's the thing, though. See, what Skip talking about, he would close the gap. Yeah. Nah, he about to Usain Bolt. Oh. He went in when he about to take off. This is the, the, the LeBron Why? fan. This is what they do. If he wins, it's all because of mm-hmm. LeBron James. If he loses, he no matter what, have he doesn't help. have enough help. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. It's not fair. What would Michael Jordan do if he had Clarkson mm-hmm. and Hill and, and Hill? Have you know what he do if you he didn't have You were the one jumping around when they made the trade for those four guys. Yes. And guess what? Mm-hmm. In game seven, they had a, co- a collection of eight points between the four of them. Hood didn't even play in that game. You don't mind me asking. They don't have anybody. You don't mind me asking. How many points did Jay Crowder, Isaiah Thomas, and Dwayne Wade have in game seven? I don't, they didn't play. Oh, 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 they didn't play. You know why? Because you and I both know the guys that they acquired were better suited for the situation they were in. So with that being said, here's the thing, Skip. Even though LeBron had a monster, now he had 35, what, 35, 15 and 9. It still took Jeff Green's 19 points. It took JR, and they got hot in the second half mm-hmm. to pull them over the hump. It also the, took Boston missing 32 threes. Yeah. That's what it took. What, what, their throats were getting tight. Well, as, well, well hey, Houston said, we, we, we taught them. Yeah, we they missed, missed 37. We missed 37. Mm-hmm. So the, the, don't feel bad. Throats were getting tight. But, but here's the question do you, do you believe that Jeff Green, if Jeff Green averages 19, and 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 uh, Jr. averages 14. Cavaliers will win. Cavaliers aren't winning the series. You know it deep down. You why? Know it. Why? Why? They're not win? good enough. Uh, They're not good enough. They. The the Warriors are so much better than this team. I don't know why people are trying to uh, couch it and well, if he pulls it off, he's not pulling this off. The NBA is always about one thing, and the team with the best players always. I wins. Hold on, say, I want you to say what you the just said. The best the players always. Win. So is that why Michael Jordan couldn't get past the big three Celtics, even though he was the goat? You always go back to this. You have revisionist history. 
My, you know Michael, what? Michael Jordan stopped I, I'm, all I'm, these Hall of Famers. I'm, I'm getting scared over here because when Rob believes something this strongly, you, you, you might want to bet the other way. <laughs> mm-hmm. What? Uh, Skip, you're what are you scaring saying? me. I've you won said a, he, I've, you I've, That's won, what you think. I've won a few dinners off him when you had conviction that this was going to happen. 14 of them one time. And they got paid off in one night. <laughs> one big night. And it was a big payoff. It was a big payoff. Yeah. And, I, and I paid. Yeah, it was wasn't a big, any coupon. It was a yeah, it was. Check. It yep. was a big check. I paid. Yeah. Groupon. Groupon. No, it wasn't. Uh, yes, it was. Shannon, I hate to be the bearer of bad tidings, but in all probability, your man is going to lose and wind up with as many NBA Finals losses as Michael Jordan has victories. Six to six, except Michael had no NBA Finals losses, and it's going to be 6-0 and versus 3-6. and six, and It's just case closed, game nope. over. It, it was over a long time ago because, you know, what you, what you keep trying to sweep under your little carpet over there is that LeBron melted down in 2011. Michael never melted down in any playoff series ever. And in 2014, as the leader of the Heat with Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh, you can tell me they weren't what they used to be. Underdogs. Okay, but they got blown off the floor by a record finals margin in five games. A gentleman sweep by my Spurs. Yep. Did LeBron, how did LeBron play? Just in, in, game, in games three and four, I, I ask you, uh, yeah, three and four back in Miami, go check the tape because I watched it closely. He, he wasn't himself in those games. No, he wasn't himself. It was one-to-one going back to Miami. But he still averaged 28, 7, and 5. But his team lost, and the best player on the planet would have won one of those games. What, what did, uh, if you don't mind me asking, can you tell the people mm-hmm. at home what Chris Bosh and D-Wade averaged in that game? With that series? You know, yeah. We don't have time for Yeah, that. yeah, we, yeah. we got plenty of time. Why are you bringing up old stuff? Oh, you, right. See, and that hurts Joy, because Joy was there. Joy saw it right before I was like. And then, Shannon, I will never forget this. What? This what was, was against the, the, the new Golden State Warriors. They weren't sure of themselves. They got in every break and every rung of the playoffs because yes. the point guard was hurt, hurt, hurt in the previous opponents. Yes. And they get to the finals, and all of a sudden, they're up against the LeBron. They cannot stop because they don't have Iguodal in the lineup yet. He's playing a little bit. But LeBron was a monster in yeah. games one, two, and three. And all of a sudden, they're up two games to one with game four in the King's house. And I got to tell you, he shot seven for 22 that night and five of 10 from the free throw line, and he just shrank. And I've never seen anything like it because you had them dead to rights. He averaged 35, 13 and nine. And, and the second and third best player on that roster at the time was Timothy Mozgov. Can you tell the mm. people that? Uh, Rob Parker that doesn't know Tim Faye Miles God. Can you tell the people what he Okay. <laughs> what about Matthew Delavadova? He was the third best player yeah, on that he, roster. He, that he, he won game well, two. Though. He made he the play well in game him. two. Coming off the bench in Milwaukee. <laughs> so that's what LeBron That's what LeBron was trying to win a title. He was trying to take down the uh, an so MVP. So it's never LeBron, LeBron's fault. LeBron's it's never his fault. Le, 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 never. 2011, I put that all on him. Have you ever well, seen Michael Jordan play like that? He done made up for Shannon Sharp. If I could take Michael Jordan at age 28 and put him in LeBron's shoes that night of game four in his house against that Golden State team that had not won a championship, was new to this, and the lights were getting a little bright and the throats were getting a little tight, Michael Jordan would just slit their throats. Oh, so he just I, would. I'm oh, just okay, telling you he would with the same group. Let me same group. Leave it there. So no Scotty Pippen? Rob, thanks huh? for joining no us. Pippen? Does Nick Foles sound no like he wants out of Philly? We'll debate that next. No mercy. According to a report earlier this month, the Eagles rejected a trade to send Nick Foles to the Browns for the 35th overall draft pick. The report added that the Eagles notified Foles, but the reigning Super Bowl MVP said he'd rather stay in Philly. But yesterday, Foles claimed he was left in the dark all along. Let's take a listen. There wasn't any discussion on the trades. Um, I think that, you know, how he said what he wanted for me. And, you know, I just said if there ever comes to a point where you want to sit down and have a discussion, if there was something he was interested, we'd sit down and talk about it. But, you know, that never came to be. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm here and I'm excited to be here. So you didn't turn down going? I haven't turned down anything. We haven't talked about anything that, you know, that wasn't a true statement at, at all. Um, you know, I'm excited to be here. At the end of the day, I'm not the GM of this team. Um, I have a great relationship with Howie to where if something did happen, we could have a discussion. But at the end of the day, he gets to decide. I'm just a player, um, but I'm a grateful player for being here. Shannon, what does this tell mm. you? Sounds like Nick Foles is trying to cover his butt. Nick Foles says, I want to be a starter, but just not in Cleveland. Skip, first of all, what backup quarterback you know? has such a relationship with the general manager. Now, Howie Roseman said, he, Howie told me what he was asking for me. I can assure you, if somebody would have gave Howie Roseman those two first-round picks, he's not calling you. He's calling to tell you you got traded. Mm-hmm. That's what we know for certain. Nick, you did a great job. 
you had three of the best games in playoff history. But, bro, you need to pump mm-hmm. your brakes. You're not Tom Brady. You're not, you're not Drew Brees. You're not Roethlisberger. You don't get that kind of – Skip, he said, you know, we got that kind of relationship that, you know, if something were to go down, he going to call me, let me know what's up. Really? I get it, Nick. You don't want to come off as the bad guy. You don't want to be a starter. Like, I want to start guys. Um, but, you know, I really want to start in Cleveland. I'd just rather be a backup here. Because guess what, Skip? If he doesn't play this year, guess what's the last game we're going to see Nick Foles play? The Super Bowl. Hmm. So he doesn't play. That's what everybody go remember, Skip. They, are all, they remember the last thing you ever did. Hmm. So the last thing Nick Foles ever did in the uniform, if he doesn't start a game this year, was win the Super Bowl. Hmm. Man, Nick, look. I would have just preferred him to say, look, I'm not the general manager. They were going to do what they were going to do. I'm happy to be here. But if they got what they needed to do, hey, so be it. But he's trying to come. He don't want to look like the bad guy. Mm. Like, he turned Cleveland down. Mm. That's all it is, Skip. So, somebody is lying here. Yeah. Somebody's being a little careless with the truth here. Well, maybe right? it's alternative facts. Uh-huh. Mm. And okay, my partner across the table, <laughs> Shannon Sharp, is accusing Nick Foles of being careless with the facts or the truth. Or maybe whatever. he was misrepresenting so Maybe the he truth. was misrepresenting the truth, says Shannon Sharp. Yeah. On this side of the table, I'm doing a, hmm, I'm doing a, aha. No, you're trying to start, you, yeah. I know what you're trying to do, yeah. Skip. It's not going to happen. Nick Foles is happy being the backup. So the initial story came from Howie Roseman, the GM, that it was Nick Foles who vetoed that trade to, to Cleveland. He just didn't want to go to Cleveland for a high second round pick. It was the third pick in the second round. This is way before the draft, before they, Cleveland then had to resort to acquiring Tyrod Taylors. It had to be before then. Yes. That was their plan A, depending on what was going to happen right. in the draft, or maybe their plan B was Nick Foles. But they were willing to part with a pretty high pick. Yeah, high that was the third pick. pick in the second round. Yeah. For a guy who was once drafted Nick Foles in the third round, so you could say, oh, that's a pretty fair deal, yeah. pretty fair exchange. But it sounds to me like Howie Roseman decided in and of himself, which he is, has all the power to do, and I have no issue with that, but he decided, I cannot part ways with this man. He is just too valuable to us because, number one, Howie Roseman cannot be sure that your man Carson Wentz will get and stay healthy. I don't know. Forget getting, stay healthy, be healthy at the start of the season. Okay, but that's what I mean. How quickly will he get healthy? And then he's got a little kamikaze in him. He's got a little daredevil in him. Will he stay healthy? I don't know. I hope so for his sake. But number two, and to your point, Nick Foles at least played the two, I I think, back-to-back greatest quarterback games in the playoffs in history. I I would agree. He torched the number one ranked Minnesota Vikings defense in the championship game, albeit in Philadelphia. And then he torched Bill Belichick's defense to the tune of 41 points in the Super Bowl and outgunned the greatest quarterback ever, Tom Brady. That's pretty great. I didn't didn't think, because when we talking about this game leading up to the Super Bowl, Skip, we are not both said, do we think Nick Foles can play like that on that stage against that team? Mm-hmm. Like, nah, he can't play that again. He can't throw for another 353 and three or four touchdowns. He, nah, he not do do throws for 373 mm-hmm. and three touchdowns. So he basically played o- on a bigger stage, played equally as well. He did. Did he not look poised and deadly he accurate looked, looked all night long? Boy, he sure looked like that to me. So I'm here. I'm looking at it upside down. Who you believe you. Skip? I'm believing... Howard. Nick Foles. I'm, no, I'm believing Nick Foles. I, I think he didn't know anything about this. He didn't veto or reject or, di- or nix any trade. And I believe that Howie Roseman said, wow, so how- down, he, how he can't know for sure if Carson Wentz can do in the playoffs what we just saw Nick so Foles why would, do. So why would Howie have the conversation with him then? Well, I don't th- – Nick Foles is saying – No, he, no. There was no conversation. Yeah, you know, no, 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 no. Nick Foles said he and Howie had a conversation of what he was going to be asking for him. That's what Nick okay. said. Yeah, but but he said there was no specific conversation about I have an offer on the table from Cleveland. He I, said I don't know anything about that. I trust Howie. He said that wasn't a true statement at all. That's the quote I just heard. From I Nick trust Cole. all Howies, Howie Long, Howie Roseman. Yeah. Howie Schaub. Yeah. Howie Schaub. Stump the Schwab, ain't that his name? Oh, oh, that how? Oh, yeah, I love him. Yeah. <laughs> he's just so. Okay. How how would how how is normally tell the truth? Okay. Except they the normally... one I went to school with at Savannah State. That was yeah. Roscoe. He, okay. he lies. Well, I'm not sure about this Howie. He might be sort of shifting the truth a little bit to his advantage because 
I'm here to tell you, I think there as a management group, maybe not Doug Peterson. Maybe Doug Peterson is completely all in on Carson Wentz because he loves that kid and yeah. he's a great kid mm -hmm. and he's all heart and he's a, he's a coach's dream and I get all that. But Howie Roseman, who's a slick operator, yeah. he was the executive of the year to me and he continues to be in the offseason. Yeah, I wonder, well, he should have won that. And, but think about it, Skip. He had the title and then he had to cede that power, power mm -hmm. to Chip Kelly. Yep. And Jeffrey Lure, to his credit, hey, I made a mistake. He I'm did. Come on back and, and take the thing over. And now he's going to run rush out mm. over the NFC East. Mm. So the bad he, he redid the contract to one Nick Foles and in, in long term incentives, he can make sort of starters money. Yeah. So it's all on the table for Nick to be very happy in Philadelphia because I think they're not sure that Carson Wentz is the long term. Yeah, answer. they gave him a couple extra dollars in his pocket yeah. right now. So yeah. even. Even if, even if Howie didn't tell the, and misrepresented the truth, Joy, which there's a possibility he might have, mm. he could have said, yeah, oh, well, you know, hey, I just felt this was a better situation for me. Sometimes, mm. Skip, you bite the bullet for the betterment of all. Mm. Mm -hmm. Are you sure Carson Wentz could have done what Nick Foles I'm did? I'm 1,000% for certain. I am 1,000 not percent I think sure. he's throwing for I think he's throwing for 400 yards and about five touchdowns. No mercy. Thanks for listening to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm Joy Taylor. We're back again tomorrow morning at 930 Eastern. We'll see you then. Box, sports, one of one. one.